that you've expressed this before that sometimes it's a mental issue coming in. So was there something that shifted during the second half? What was that stretch okay. at the end of the second quarter? And in all honesty, our approach and competitiveness wasn't where it needed to be to start the game. And it made enough plays offensively to uh, stay in the game. But that last minute 40 um, of the half, first half, is where it, I think unraveled. And from that point, they had the life and energy. They were playing with a lot more pace. And we were always on our heels trying to catch up. Was this one of those games where the offense was affected by the defense? Well, both were affected. I mean, obviously, the, the defensive part, you know uh, KD is going to get what KD gets. He gets it every night. But to have six other guys, you know, get loose and play with a level of ease and comfort uh, really can't happen. You're not going to win a lot of basketball games that way. Wes, your team had a, a stirring victory in Philly in which everyone felt like they were tied together. How does a performance like this after a high like that occur? Uh, that's a good question. Very disappointing. And I mean, it's not, I'm not pointing blame at players, you know, across the board. We all got our butts kicked tonight. That's the bottom line. We all have to own that. And it's embarrassing. Um, but I thought you know, it started with our approach. You know, our approach was lackluster. I think we thought we could ease our way into a game where we felt they didn't have a complete complement uh, roster-wise, and they turned around and, and bit us in the butt. Wes, you guys did get some threes going early. Just when that faded, what would what were you what was going to get the message to um, the guys on the sideline and trying to pull them out of it? How did you want to want them to start doing that? Well, I want us to, to you know tighten up defensively. I mean, you get stops, you get easy transition opportunities. Um, but we had zero resistance at the point of attack. Guys went wherever they wanted to get. Uh, they had 60, I think, in the paint. So it's being able to keep bodies in front um, was an issue. And it does affect your offense. You know, if you always taking the ball out of the net, or always at the free throw line, then now you once again, you're playing against a set defense. So if we got some stops, we get some easy ones, and we didn't get any stops. Did anyone speak up in the locker room after this one, or was it just you? A couple of guys spoke during the, during the game. So, I mean, it was it was positive in nature, but, um, you know, when, when did we learn our lesson? You know, it's – they flat out beat us, they beat us. Okay, that, that, that's going to happen some nights. Shots aren't going to fall. Great players will make great plays. But our approach, our competitiveness wasn't there. Wes, do you think that what's going on with the Nets kind of spilled over into – I, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's, you know, that's their problem, and they seem to remedy that tonight. Um, I, I thought it was about us. We didn't do the things we needed to do. Uh, that showed. Can you uh, clear up what your uh, message this morning, this afternoon was? Yeah, so um, that's unfortunate, but my uh, my tweet got completely taken out of context. Um you know, probably a product of wrong place, wrong time, for sure. Um, you know, obviously, anyone that knows me knows my character. You know, I'm all about peace and love. I don't condone any discrimination or hate of any race, religion, politician, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, um, you know, just unfortunate in where we live in and how, you know, we all don't think the same. So... Um, that was in reference to a personal matter in my life. Um, I mean, I would tell you guys, but I don't think my family and friends would uh, appreciate me airing them out. But uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, waking up and, and you know, actually looking back at, not looking back now, but looking back 30, 40 minutes prior after the tweet, you know, you see everybody talking about it. Um, you know, just really unfortunate, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's pretty big news right now. And, um, you know, people definitely look into finding whatever they can, especially with this topic. So, um, just being unfortunate, it's wrong place, wrong time.
you know, obviously, like I said, I don't condone anything of that. Never have, never will. Uh, I mean, this is unfortunate. Um, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, people have the right to their own opinions and how they think and how they feel. Um, and it's up to you to side with them or not, you know. Um, you know, might be a little bit of miseducation, but, you know, I can't really speak for that man, you know. Why is the popularity towards Kyrie so strong among the players? And the the, what do you mean? Why is he so popular? Before all this, just in general, why is Kyrie has such a key following inside the league? Uh, I, have you seen him play basketball? Yeah, I mean, uh, game seven is finals. He's a hell of a basketball player. You know, we love basketball. So I think that, uh, you know, a, a lot of that popularity comes from just, you know, seeing the artistry within him from a, a basketball standpoint. I mean, I'm always a proactive person. I've been that way my entire life. So, you know, seeing everything, you know, just sending him a text, you know, because he is my teammate. And I understand that. I understand he is um, Jewish. And um, probably if he didn't know, probably could have potentially hurt him. But, um, no, we're all good. All good. Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. Shit. <laughs> um, what went wrong? You know, it was just a tough game. I feel, I, thought, I feel like for us, uh, this may be crazy to say, but you know, we kind of gave uh, Kevin, you know, a little bit too much respect. Um, just from a standpoint of, you know, coming in, double teaming him off the rip, which is good. You want to get the ball out of his hands, but I think we allowed other players on their team and and collectively their offense to really gain momentum and have a flow throughout the entire game. You know, I felt like everybody hit at least a three on their team. And, um, you know, I think we just started off on the wrong foot and then, Offensively, we didn't really get much. I don't know what we scored, 86 points, 86 points. So it's a, it's a tough night. Now, you guys had a stern win in Philly. Everyone screamed at you and How did uh, a 40 point loss like this happen? You know, left down, an emotional left down. We just didn't come out and have no, we had no competitive spirit. We didn't play hard. Um, from top to bottom, you know, everything. We just, you know, we had a couple good runs. I think we got the game within two in the in the first half. I think it was like 54, 56 or something. And then it kind of just got out of hand. Um, you know, didn't make enough shots. And we were just playing in a rotation all night, you know, coming off a double and then just flying around and, those guys credited them. They they made a lot of great shots, a lot of tough shots, and they made the right basketball play pretty much every possession. I, I feel like if you look at their their season, that was probably their best offensive night. I would say so. Uh, what do you mean? No, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, after my nap, when I had a million text messages and death threats, but keep going. Okay, you can't just drop that. <laughs> How did you? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean about death threats? It, you know, um. There's just a lot of assumptions out there. 
and uh, you know just a lot of just crazy stuff out there you know, a lot of messages back and forth social media um yeah um i mean it's i don't know it's probably bots at this point i don't know who is behind the mic who's behind the, the tweets but you know there were a few of those but you know it it all stems from just wrong place, wrong time, misinterpretations. So I get it. You know, it's not the end of the world. It was a letdown. It was definitely a step back uh, on the defensive end. We uh, we showed no resistance, uh, no physicality, uh, really no pride in, on that end of the floor. I think that's what it came down to. And we, we didn't have it at all tonight. The strip you had on KD in the second quarter, I think, was the first turnover you guys forced all night. It was like one and a half quarters in. Yeah. Um, was that a product of the defense, or were they doing something to protect the ball? Uh, I mean, they, they were doing a really good job. We started off early, and we were doubling Kev. And I think we left kind of Royce open for the first couple of threes and got him going. Uh, we were always just kind of behind in, every, in all of our rotations, and that kind of kicked us in the butt. Um, you know, when you're trying to take the ball out of Cameron's hands, you know, you we have to be better at understanding who we're closing out to, um, understanding the drivers versus shooters, and that's just knowing our personnel, which we should be better at. You know, there's no excuse for that. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have nights like that sometimes. I mean, hopefully not 40-point nights like shit tonight. But, uh, I mean, they did a really good job just moving the ball. The ball was hopping. It wasn't sticking. Even in Kevin saying it wasn't sticking. Like it was moving. He was quick, decisive with his with his moves and decision making. I just crowded up under him, so he doesn't. I know he doesn't like that for most guys. Brad, um, you said you guys get hot like that. Is there anything you can do defensively to kind of slow him to get in this way? Um, We've been watching him for how long? I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's ways. Obviously, I mean, you definitely can take the ball out of his hand and double him. Split them, make them uncomfortable, foul them. Uh, but I mean, he's still going to be aggressive. He's still going to put pressure on you. He's not going to stop attacking. Uh, he has a killer mindset, so you know you you got to be ready for everything. And then even tonight, he was what he had like ten assists, something like that, eleven. You know, so he was he's very active. He's active, moving the ball, sharing it, and you know he he played well tonight. He he played an overall game. It was a crazy week. That's that's it. I, I didn't really have a opinion about anything. I didn't really read much into what Kyrie posted or anything. I just know it was wasn't good. And, uh, and I was aware of the Spurs thing and all that stuff is that's not in our camp, so I don't really dive too deep into it. I talked to Denny a little bit the other day. Um about how you felt about the situation and he shared it, but and then I don't have an opinion on it, honestly. Hey, I don't even remember the first thing I looked at, honestly. Uh but yeah, I mean we didn't shoot it well, we didn't defend well. It was very simple. It was not like it was a difficult game to dissect. Yeah. We got to ask it. Do you think any of the noise surrounding the Nets team impacted your guys' effort coming into this game? No, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would say the only thing maybe is the fact we knew Kyrie wasn't playing. and We might have like let off the gas in that regard and thought it was going to be easy coming into the night. But all what they have going as an organization that has nothing to do with us and what we got going and how we go about our day. So, you know. Obviously, you guys will watch the film and, you know, try and get some takeaways, but more or less you just kind of try and flush this and move on. Yes and no. You know, we uh, we still have to get better from it. You know, we can't just keep flushing games and just thinking we can just move on. We still got to gotta learn from them, get better from them, we can't keep making the same mistakes, especially when you make a good stride and you beat a team like Philly and you worked hard on the road for their win. 
Uh, you got to be able to maintain that consistency, and I got to do a better job making sure we're ready to go uh, on a nightly basis. You know, so uh, we got two teams that's coming up that are super athletic, push the ball. You know, we thought you know Philly was fast. We thought this game was fast paced. This these next two are gonna be crazy. You know, so we got to have our, our track shoes on. And we got to make sure that we're physical because Memphis is super physical. They hit first and they keep hitting. Uh, Charlotte's the same way. So, you know, we got to make sure that we're ready to go tomorrow.